As we can see here, we have a picture of Mike and Sully from Disney's Monsters, Inc. But it is surprising of you to know that there's more here than meets the eye. There actually is. That message you see on the right-hand side is actually hidden behind this picture using something called steganography. That is part of cryptography, and that's something that I'll explain to you today. My name is Glenn Taylor, and I'm a cyber analyst for the United States Air Force. Today I'll be talk to you, talking to you about cryptography throughout history and today. We're going to go over what cryptography is. We're going to talk about cryptography throughout history, modern encryption, and why it's important to us. To start out, Webster defines cryptography as the enciphering and deciphering of messages in secret or code, or the computerized encoding and decoding of information. Now, what does that mean? Basically, what it means is if you've ever sent anything to any of your friends, or you've ever said something to someone in a language that maybe you only understand, or something's in code, then you are doing cryptography. The first instance of cryptography was 1900 BC at Khnum Hotep's tomb in Egypt. Nicholas McDonald outlined that they used a substitution cipher for the hieroglyphics. This was to keep the message on the person's tomb private and meant only for those that were involved in individual life. Next, Fred Cohen outlines that in about 487 BC, the Greeks and Spartans used something called a sky tell. As you can see down here, it was a circular tube wrapped in rawhide with the message written down it lengthwise. When it was unwrapped, the message was unable to be read. Moving on, we have Jacob Mathai, who talks about the Caesar cipher. It was first used about 2,000 years ago and was the first military use of cryptology. You may all know who Julius Caesar is. This is what he came up with. As you can see here, all it is is a sliding alphabet. A, B, C, D in the normal alphabet in the beginning, it slid to the end in the cipher. If you look there, L, P, J, R, R, would translate to my name, Glenn, and that's how you use that cipher. Continuing on, in 1933 through 45, the Germans used what's known as the Enigma machine. The Sands Institute outlines that this was used with rotors and gears that allowed uh, computations up to 10 to the 114th power. Up to this time, that was unheard of, which is why it took the Allies so long to break it. The individual to first break it was actually the Polish mathematician, Mary Rajewski, not Turbin, as outlined in the famous movie, uh, Imitation Game. Moving on to the present, we have public key encryption. Sarah Simpson outlines this and the need for this because of the digital 